Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech and number 52 doing a 12 post deck tech. I love this deck. I've been playing it recently in Legacy and I've had some very good results with it. It's a very solid deck that really takes one of the stars of EDH and of Standard and puts it into a Legacy environment. That star being Primeval Titan. Primeval Titan is amazing. I don't understand why he hasn't seen more play. He's basically able to go over the top of all of the other legacy stars that are out there. He runs over Bloodbraid Elves and Delvers and Shardless Agents extremely effectively. The name of this deck, 12 Post, really comes from these 12 cards along with, I've got Thespian Stage here currently, but Cloud Post gives you extra mana, Glimmer Post gives you huge amounts of extra life, and Vesuva gives you whichever one of those you really need. Thespian Stage also works pretty well in this deck because it allows you to add on an extra element of flexibility. Let's look at Thespian Stage a little bit closer here. Thespian Stage on turn one has an advantage over Vesuva as you then have something to copy and it doesn't come into play tapped so you can throw out a pithing needle right away to stop your opponent's wastelands. A turn one cloud post opens you up to a wasteland. It does have a little bit of a disadvantage. It cannot be a glimmer post right away because you don't get that comes into play ability. I mean, yes, you can spend the two mana and turn it into a glimmer post, but it doesn't give you that same positive effect. Also, the two mana ability switching it into another land often gives you a wasteland type effect to stop your opponent's Caracuses or other legendary lands. I like this as a 13th post in the deck. I may even make it a replacement for one of the Vesuvas, because a pair of Vesuvas in your opening hand is really obnoxious, where a Vesuva, a Thespian Stage, and a Cloud Post is a much better opening. Having that one mana on turn one is extremely helpful. Now that we've looked at the posts, let's look at the deck list. This is a pretty standard deck list that I'm running here, although I've got the Tabernacle of Pendlevale main deck and I'm only one, running one candle. I'll talk about those choices a little bit later. The main idea here in this deck, though, is to get a huge amount of mana and play one of those Primeval Titan or the Emrakul Ulamog Kozilek suite and then win the game with some Annihilator. This is a solid quick deck. It's got a very large land count. Most of them run 25, 26 lands. And it's not an inexpensive deck overall. The cost of this deck is about $2,500, which seems a little bit seen, although it's pretty standard for Legacy. The big reason this deck has shot up a lot, though, is dual lands keep going up. The tropical islands there are about $125 apiece. And then the candelabras are running anywhere from three to four hundred dollars a piece and tabernacle has always been pretty expensive. You can put together a budget version that adds an oblivion stone and primeval uh, and still is able to cast primeval titan pretty consistently but it is a little bit slower also breeding pool is playable but taking that damage can hurt. The main hitters in this deck to get you through and win are your Kozlek, Emrakul, and Ulamog. Ulamog is extremely important because of his ability to hit a permanent, although most of the time what I really want is a Primeval Titan. Primeval Titan allows you huge flexibility, letting you go get two different cards, and you'll often get the Primeval Titan out first, then go after an Eye of Ulamog, stabilize the game with some Glimmer Posts, and then use your Cloud Posts to go tutor up the Eldrazi and win the game. The other thing that I really like about this deck is crop rotation. Crop rotation is a great way to deal with wastelands because it lets you sacrifice whatever land they targeted and then cycle that into a different land, usually a utility land. But the number of lands in this deck give you more than just replacement or utility. They're really like having your sideboard directly in the deck. Glacial Chasm, Tabernacle of Pendle Vale, and Bajuka Bog just crush several decks, while Caracas is wonderful against show and tell decks. I was playing against Dredge the other day and Crop Rotate with Baruka Bog just destroyed my opponent game one and then after bringing in a little more graveyard hate game two there was just no chance for my opponent. With crop rotate I would also 
recommend making sure to put out a green source first turn so that if your opponent goes for that early wasteland strategy you've got the crop rotate ready to use. Sideboard has a lot of different options. I really enjoy Pithing Needle. It stops things like Liliana and Jace extremely effectively while also shutting down Wastelands, although I've moved the Pithing Needles to the main deck. Oblivion Stone is great because you have very few permanents that you're worried about. Mind Bake Trap is really good for the Storm matchup, and Storm is one of the worst matchups you have. They've got access to blue, so you can also put Spell Pierce or Fluster Storm in there, which are also very good. Tabernacle Love moved to main deck, although most people play at sideboard, but Engineered Explosives and Chalice of the Void are cards for the sideboard. You really have a very flexible sideboard between the blue and the colorless and the ability to produce massive mana, so I'd just look at what the current metagame is and choose from there. The big thing about this deck that really moves it from tier 1 to tier 2 or tier 2 to tier 1 is the inclusion or missing elements of Candelabra of Thanos and Tabernacle of Pendo Vale. It's one of the reasons long term that uh, Legacy is getting very difficult to play is the cost of these cards, but these cards are just amazing. In and of themselves, Candle, it speeds you up one or two turns, and Tabernacle just crushes some decks. So let's take a minute here and look at a particular sequence and see if you can find the best play. What would you do if this was your turn and you're facing down a horde of goblins? Well, the simple answer is to play a Primeval Titan. Just put that extra tropical in play, go get two Glimmer Posts, grab eight life, and hopefully stabilize the game and win. But if you're playing 12 post, you really need to look for the much more complicated line out there, which is much better. So let's go back here, take a second, see if you can find the best line, unless you found it the first time. And this took me a second to find while well playing. Okay, so the best line is right here. Uh, you start by putting a Vesuva in play, and then tap your Cloud Posts for 3 mana apiece and your Tropical Island, giving you 7 mana. Then you move on to step 2, you use the Candelabra of Thanos to untap those lands and retap them, netting you a total of 13 mana. 13 mana looks good, because you could definitely play Ulamog off of that, but you have something better, which is to repeal the Candelabra and replay the Candelabra. That puts you down to 10 mana, but then use the Candelabra to untap and retap all of the lands out there. That gives you 16 mana and to play the Emmercool straight off. Now, Emmercool is pretty amazing because you can't be countered and he allows you to take an extra turn. Then once you get to the extra turn, you can cast Primeval Titan, go get another Cloud Post, and a Crocus, return the Emrakul to your hand, and take infinite extra turns. The potential that Candelabra gives you is just incredible in this deck. This deck does have a number of good matchups. Anybody who's trying to play fair or grind you out is going to lose. Primeval Titan just runs over Bloodbraid Elves, Shardless Agents, and Deathrite Shaman. Punishing Fire also does little to nothing to you. Show and Tell, though, is a little more of a mixed bag. If they're playing a traditional Show and Tell sneak attack, it's just wonderful to have something equally good or better to put out, such as Primeval Titan versus an Emrakul. If they're playing the Omniscience version, I like grabbing Glacial Chasms, but it really depends on their win condition. This may be a difficult match for you, uh, depending on how they go about winning. A matchup that most people think is difficult, but is actually not that bad, is four Wastelands. Lots of Legacy decks play them, you just have to learn how to play against them. Crop Rotate is a great example. There's four main deck, and it helps you beat Wastelands. Pithing Needle, which I'm running main deck, is also really good. Uh, Tefiri's Response is also nice, because it turns it into a advantage for you. You get to draw a card in response to a Wasteland or a Dust Bowl, which is extremely helpful. Your tough 
matchups are those decks that try to go off turn one like Storm or Epic Storm, which is why we've got so much Storm hate in the sideboard. Also, Bust or Armageddon, something that destroys all lands, is a real problem for you. Now, you can usually go off before a four casting cost Armageddon, but Bust, even though it's six casting costs, can be cascaded into because of Boom in the card and can be cast as early as turn two or turn three or turn four reliably, which is a huge problem for you. Destroying all lands in a land-centric deck. There's not a lot that I've found that can deal with that. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe with a Legacy Deck Tech for the 12 post deck. I hope you get a chance to give it a try. It's a wonderfully fun deck to play. Definitely enjoyed putting it together and playing it the last few weeks. I've been so bored since I was banned in EDH. I need to find new friends to play with. Ooh, goblins. I like goblins. I know what we can do to deal with goblins. Yeah, goblins, meet my friends. <laughs>